Hi, Misha here, and this will be a slightly different black box on the personal channel, but I do have a topic, and it is related to guns. So some people might be coming over from the Mishiko channel because I published a video on the history of the AK Century series and delving into that. I didn't really talk about Segas that much at all, but I did talk about Kalashnikov USA, KUSA. Kuza. And there's a lot going on, when is there not, about the company as we get in to the end of 2022. And people have asked my opinions and there's been various comments because we put up videos on the KR-103, KP-104, and that's just this year alone. Well, some of the stuff I did talk about in the main Michiko channel but some of it really isn't directly involved with the firearm. It's more marketing, politics, perceptions, attitudes, and frankly, just my opinion and yours. So that's why we have this black box. I have a few minutes. Let's talk about it. Got to be honest. I didn't actually know there was much going on before we post the uh, most recent videos on the KP-104. I, I don't especially lately I haven't really had time to mess with forums much and kind of just don't want to but you know sorry the cats were running and doing something with it sure <sighs> but anywho what do I think well I still am not sure I'd care Okay, let me explain. I know that there have been quality control slips. That I do care about. What I can say personally is the KR-103 I received, this is the side folder, this summer, and the KP-104 I received were well put together guns. About the only negative, and it's really honestly perhaps being a little over analytical for being honest with it one of the rear pieces of the receiver was ever so slightly flared out from being riveted you really didn't notice it with the top cover on but when you took it off you could notice it bowing out just a little bit as compared to the rear trunnion i mean it's not anything i like these are ak's i have imports with the same or even weirder little things it happens the KP-104 I got, when it comes to that stuff, was fine. My finish was fine. I had nothing just bad to say about it. the muzzle device, the detent, top cover fitment was fine. Now, of course, with it, I didn't like the fact that it had the standard 1,000 meter rear sight, and it came with the shotgun safety, the one with the bolt hold up a notch. The rear sight thing is totally me just wanting to have a clone correct gun. And since KUSA said they were doing clone correct guns, and before that's really what they were doing, I don't think it was that too big of an ask. I'm gonna be honest, if it were a Palmetto State gun, I would have maybe pointed it out, but not dinged them. But because KUSA has set that bar for themselves, I did comment on it and, you know, felt it was a, bit of an oversight. I did find a 500 meter resight and put it on. The safety, on the other hand, can potentially cause some issues with the firing control groups, specifically the spring, specifically, specifically the arms of the spring. Take it out of there. The good news is pretty much any AK safety will work. And also, if you call KUSA, they will send you one, a correct safety. Also good news, no gunsmithing, no real disassembly aside from taking the top cover off is required to swap safeties on an AK. It's annoying, it's a bit of a day one patch if you will, not a deal killer. What seems to be happening? Okay, my theory, total theory based on nothing. 2022, a couple of things happened. 
One, you have supply shortages. Every company has been having these. They're getting better, they still exist. Two, you either have a labor force that was off work for an extended period of time, or you more likely have new hires that just maybe haven't received adequate training. And part of that is three, demand is up. KUSA, based on new kind of leadership, has wanted to increase their volume. I can't blame them for that. Back in 2019, and of course in 2020, they weren't turning out near enough guns to meet demand. On the other hand, their QC was pretty great. When you speed up, QC goes down. We saw this. Now, I'm, Romanian guns, they were never known for amazing fit and finish. They were known for adequate fit and finish based on their cost. But in, at the end of 2008, after the election, leading into 2009, Century and Kuger both ramped up production. Historically, the sloppiest and most troublesome wassers come from this roughly six month period. Does that mean that all wassers built in late 08 and early 09 have QC issues? No. It just means the likelihood went up. And the same seems to be true with KUSA. The likelihood of getting something incorrect from the factory is high in 2022, but talking to more and more people, it seems like most people are satisfied or they're like me where they got one or two parts they wanted to swap out. I don't mind a little DIY stuff, but you know, your mileage may vary. <sighs> one reason I'm not giving up is it doesn't seem to be a design problem. It doesn't seem like the specs are off and it doesn't seem like it's an actual material problem. We're not having problems with bolts shearing, trunnions cracking, receivers cracking. That would mean something was being made wrong. That's not what we're seeing. The parts still seem to be made correctly. The failure seems to be happening at the assembly line area or maybe the finishing area and the final checks area, which would be kind of where you were expecting your newer employees to be at. They need to tighten that up, but it's not, your gun can be fixed. You know, if, you're, if your gun is on a bad receiver, what are you gonna do? If it has a bad trunnion, what are you gonna do? It's, it, rebuilding it is really not worth it. If it's got the wrong safety or wrong top cover or even wrong bolt sometimes, those can be swapped out. And luckily the parts that seem to be wrong or at least less than desirable on these guns can be swapped out. Of course, every gun's different. And also, I know you know this, but keep it in mind, if you sell 10 guns and nine of them are fine, those guys either won't say anything or they might make one or two posts saying, I have one and I like it. But if that one guy out of the 10 gets a bad gun, not his fault, he's gonna make videos, he's gonna post about it, and I don't blame him. But it draws attention. But then other people see his posts and repost his experience on say another forum, another board, another YouTube channel. Even though it's the same gun, it actually seems like now there are two guns with those issues and then they might get reposted. So it gets magnified online. And also, if the guy, and we kind of experienced this with the PSA 74 when we had troubles, the initial video of failures always gets more views than the update video where it's fixed. We released a fixed video when PSA corrected the PSA 74 we got. Far fewer people watched it and commented on it than they did when it failed. The initial video and the problem videos or comments or posts seem to always get more attention. And there and again, if a person sends his gun off, he comes back, it's fixed, he might make an update post saying, I got it back, it's fixed, it works great, end of story. If he continues to have problems though, he's gonna post, post and post. I know you know this, but sometimes I think we all have to kind of keep it in, keep it in mind. And at the same time, and I'm not really thinking of any one or any company specifically, sometimes people simply have unrealistic expectations. 
certainly for a Kalashnikov. I always say that it, it is a tool. It is a garden hoe. It is a hammer. It is not a fine blade. It's not a Rolls Royce engine. Yeah. <laughs> and it seems like every AK maker and type on the market has gone through its ups and downs. Lord knows the Wasser has had more than one cycle. There was a time when people were very mistrustful of WBP. There was a time when Segas, while we're well respected, people had issues sometimes like canted sights and what have you. And Arsenal, good golly, up, down, and sideways. Problems with their stamp guns, even some problems with their mills. And that, that gets to the issues right now with the Arsenal SAM-5 that are all the talk of the internet. Before that, it was the SLR-106 or the SLR-107R. So certainly Arsenal, who imports guns made in Bulgaria, who's been building AKs since 1960, if they can get it wrong sometimes, I'm going to cut both Palmetto and KUSA some slack in America. Both are babies compared to those, and of course compared to QGIR and all that. One of the few companies I can't really think of any serious issues with that I've read about, I'm sure they're out there, is Molot. The Vepper series seems to be as close to a perfect score as you're likely to get. And having sold many in the store, I can't remember any that had issues. But again, I'm sure there's some out there. Even some of the FB Burials, which I think is an excellent gun, and I think most people would agree, there are a few lemons. Heck, even Swiss SIGs, I can think of two off the top of my head. One guy had a broken firing pin in a 553R, right out of the box. One time, SIGs shipped the wrong gas valves in the uh, 551LBs. The valves they shipped were for a 551SB, shorter barrel. They would still work, but they would overgas the crap out of the system, according to SIGs. So they actually shipped out replacements. Kind of like the KUSA gun, that was an easy fix. It happens. It happens. I think for me, it's too early to say. I definitely think that KUSA should take a page from Palmetto's book. Apologize for the problem, even if maybe it's a little overblown sometimes. And improve their, uh, their quality control. Whoever's doing checks. And just have someone that maybe is familiar with how a gun should look. Making sure, hey, that's not the right safety. I get it. Supply issues. They probably had a decision. Either we don't ship these guns because we don't have the right safety, or we ship them with a different safety that they probably didn't know would have any issues. It was probably a difference between shipping a few hundred guns and not that week. That's a tough call to make because a business is there to make profit. And that kind of gets me to something I talked about in the main video too, the grinding of the uh, top cover. That absolutely does not bug me because that's how you fit an AK top cover when you're a gunsmith, an armorer. If you have a big factory, you can try different dust, dust covers on to one fits just right, like your Goatee Locks. But if you don't or don't have the time, you just file fit it and then kind of let the parts wear in. That, that's, that's exactly normal. I've done that before. Same goes for muzzle devices. I've, uh, you know, polished or sanded the edge of a muzzle device so it times up better. So things just happen, folks. That's how AKs are made. Again, it, it is a hammer. It is a garden hoe. It's kind of a rough and ready tool. <laughs> and that's, for AK people, it's charm. And what we aren't seeing with KUSA guns so far, they're not failing after a few thousand rounds. So far, their durability, by and large, don't at me with one or two lemons, is holding up. Now that said again, I've seen a couple of wassers with cracked trunnions. It happens. But overall, that doesn't taint the probably hundreds of thousands of wassers that are in America. Now, KUSA has not shipped that many guns yet, not, not even close, but who knows? Who knows? Okay, since I want to move on from that, we can discuss 
And keep in mind, guys, I'm only going with the information that I know. I can't know everything just like you can't. If there's instances, and of course, I'm recording this probably quite a ways before this will go up because I'm going to put it out with the video on the AK-74M. So things might have changed. Keep that in mind, please. Marketing, new ownership, new direction. Yeah, it's stupid. Um, this whole kind of flashy, glitzy. I definitely am of the mindset, make a good product, stand behind your product, let it speak for itself. The whole glitz and glam thing, girls and guns, fast cars, obviously that wouldn't work well on me, for one. But even if I were a different person, I don't think it would. I have relatively simple tastes. I'm a relatively direct person, and I just want to know about the guns. Quite frankly, I find it a little weird that for some people, the gun stimulates the same part of the brain or body as something sexual. I really like guns. They give me great enjoyment, even pleasure. It's not sensual pleasure. That's a whole other thing. Likewise, women don't give me the same kind of pleasure that a gun does. They're to totally separate things. I know it's, you know, like men in their cars and all that. And all, it's, it's nothing new. It's just not how my brain works particularly. Oh, well. As far as having an ex-porn star as their spokes lady, I knew nothing about it. I didn't, I didn't even know their name. I still don't care. Uh, J-Ro actually pulled up an interview she did. If you Google, I don't know, Bonnie Rotten gun interview, it'll probably come up. Her answers were interesting. And I don't know, they were there. She uh, also seems to really have loved her grandfather, which gets into a whole other can of worms that I am not getting into. Anyway, moving on. It's a job. She's paid to do it. Does she like guns in real life? She claims to. She claims to own AKs. I don't know her in person. I'm not going to call someone I don't know, and I don't know anyone who knows, a liar. I will give her the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, I know there was that whole deal about the magazine and the gun. Guess what? When you're doing photos, everyone's done it. There's also something that I found rather odd. You actually really can't insert that mag in the gun like you think. Go, go try it. Go grab a 74 mag and try to put it in a 762 gun. I'll wait. Okay, not really. No, Russia, when they developed those guns, they were aware that, you know, that could happen, soldiers. So they made slight dimensional changes to try to prevent the mags from getting stuck in the wrong guns. That said, I think we've all tried to do it. Once I was loading up a uh, WBP 762 mag, the green ones, and it was getting sticky, and I realized I had grabbed my FB Burial 223 green mag. We all do it, because we're all human. I don't know. I don't care. Everyone has marketing gaffes. Even if she's just getting a paycheck, so what? What do you want ex-porn stars to do? Roll over and die? Go on welfare? Do you want them to go on the welfare system? I'm not going to shame someone for their past careers or choices. Would they be the choices I would make or I'd want my daughter or her mother to make? No. But you know, once something's done, it's done. You can't go back and change your past. I'm not saying she is or isn't regretful. I'm just saying even if she's super regretful and she's found Jesus and all this stuff and whatever else and she's Mother Teresa or whatever, the past is still there. You can't change it. You can't edit it. And who the hell am I to judge someone? Just because they're not meeting my moral standard. Okay, fine. I have no right to judge theirs, and I don't know their life. I don't know how they ended up in it, what happened. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We all have a past. 
we all have dark things we've done or been through. So yeah, and again, you know, in porn, if you actually read about the industry itself, not watch the porn, read about it, it's really hard. They get paid well. They also get zero benefits, zero compensation. If they ain't fucking, they're not making money. It's free labor, and it wears a lot of them out, and a lot of them get hooked on drugs and yada yada. Either way, my point is, it's not one of those jobs you can do for years upon years. I was going to say you couldn't do into your 50s, and then I remembered granny porn's a thing, and then uh, well, let's just move on from that, too. But most people aren't doing it because they want to. Some maybe do. Most do it because it's what, that's their job. But after a few years of it, they look for something else. And let's be honest, if she was doing that and then a gun company offered you a job being their spokeswoman, which would you do? Would you stay in porn or take the gun job? So... I think I would just be happy someone's not doing porn and doing something else. I don't care. But she has to eat. She has to pay bills. <laughs> so what do, you want, what do you want people that have a past? Maybe they're ex-prostitutes or whatever. Do you want them just to curl up and die? Or do you want them to be shamefaced and will wear the scarlet letter for the rest of their lives? No. I don't care what people have done in the past, they deserve happiness. If you've done a crime, you go in the jail, <clears throat> you serve your time in jail. Society shouldn't keep judging you for the rest of your life. You serve your time, you should be able to get out and try to make a go of it. That's just my thoughts and opinions, but no, having someone that I personally wouldn't date as their spokesperson that doesn't bug me. A lot of companies have spokespeople, I think, aren't people I would necessarily want to hang out with. But I got to be honest, listening to that interview that j pulled up, I could think of worse people. I've heard worse people um, better than Nancy Pelosi or Diane Feinstein. I'm just, just saying. So, yeah, it doesn't bug me. It really, I mean, she's not out, yeah, over there building guns. So, yeah, whatever. Now, their whole general marketing trend of going glitzy and all of that that she's a part of, the whole marketing push where they're going, I think it's stupid. Wouldn't be how I'd run a company. I don't think it's a morally good or bad thing. It is a marketing, it's, it is a PR decision. I think ultimately they're shooting themselves in the foot and I think they will realize that, at least I hope so. But again, they would not be the first, and they won't be the last gun company to do that. They've almost all played at that game in the past. Don't believe me? Look up old magazine adverts and Soldier of Fortune articles and things. They've all done it. Even you, Bill Ruger. Even you. It's a, it's a silly decision. But, let's be honest, when the Internet's bored... Anyone can be turned on. And sometimes you have to wonder, are people turning on someone or a company because they've really done something bad? Or are they doing it because they're bored and they haven't had a good, um, I don't know, cancel lately? You see what I'm saying? I think sometimes when, when it's a slow news week, everyone falls victim to that. And after a while, you know, it, it shifts. For a while, Zastava was trash, according to the internet. Now everyone loves them. Well, most people. You know, PSA has had its ups and downs. The truth is, there's all kinds of things. And we're not going to agree with everything they do. I don't want PSA to go out of business. And I don't want KUSA to go out of business. Now, some people have asked me, have you heard they're going under? Have you heard they're going to no longer be here? I checked around a little bit in the industry as I had time. None of the big players that wholesale KUSA guns have heard a thing. I'm not saying it will or won't happen. I'm just saying there's no rumblings under the earth about it happening. Now, if they continue to let their QC drop and they continue to make stupid marketing decisions, 
Yeah. And it's a tough time on the gun market right now. Sales are down. That was to be expected because they were up so much for over two years. That's, you know, ebb and flow. At any rate, those are my thoughts. I'm sure many will disagree, but, you know, it's what this channel's for. I'm just not into jumping to conclusions about a product based on a few bad instances. And I'm not willing to judge people and their lives not having walked a mile in their shoes. That's me. I want to know why, because usually when you get to know people and their decisions, they become less of an image in your head and they become an actual human being with feelings and a story. And that's what I want to know. And then things, they do get a little more complicated. But, you know, that takes time too. <sighs> I hope K KUSA does release more guns. I hope they and Palmetto State really get into the ammo. I think that'd be a great business for both of them because even if gun sales go down for a while, ammo sales, those are pretty consistent, especially with so many foreign sources being cut off these days. That might be kind of the future they should steer into. Not get out of guns, but, you know, put more R&D and resources into that. Of course, assuming they can make good ammo that's reliable and safe. There is a lot more that goes into ammo than just buying the stuff. You definitely need good QC there as well. I've had a case blow up on me. It's not fun. I guess I am glad I didn't know about all this before ordering my KP-104. It would have probably dampened my enthusiasm, but luckily us taking it to the range has been very positive so far, and I'm seriously considering keeping it. We'll see, though. We will see. Yeah, I think that's about what I got to say. As always, I just kind of encourage people to hang together. We need to stick together and withhold judgment. I, I collect more data, learn more, read more before you can you know, make a jump to a conclusion. Because we really need to be on each other's sides and we need to back those companies that at least we can. I'm not saying every gun company is good, far from it, but I don't like seeing any of them go out of business unless they're complete scammers and ripping people off. As long as they're delivering a safe product, even if it's not one I'm particularly interested in, PSA being a good example, I'm not trashing PSA. They just don't make what I personally am into. Other people, good friends of mine, love their stuff, and that's great. And I'm happy to shoot their guns. I'm just not interested in owning them. I, I just don't need them. I have too many AKs and I don't need any more ARs either. But that's me. That's how I, you know, we're all different. And that's great because if we were all the same, if we all wanted the same stuff exactly, nothing would ever be in stock. It would be an utter nightmare. So it's a good thing we all want different stuff. But, yeah, I've had a lot of fun shooting the KUSA guns. And I find the problems so far correctable. And I hope they don't slip to the point where they're not. And I will say that, again, PSA, while we had problems a year or two ago with the 74, they too fixed it, stepped up, and did that. So we'll see. Alrighty, folks. This is Misha. Catch you very soon next time.